What if I told you that the food your grandparents ate decades ago is still shaping your body, your face, and even your health today? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Sounds crazy, right? But science is proving that the nutritional choices of past generations directly affect how you look and feel now. From your jawline and height, to your immune system and metabolism, your body carries the legacy of their diets. This is the natural way. And today I'm breaking down how your grandparents' nutrition shaped your genetics, your face shape, and even disease risk, and whether you can reverse the damage. I've seen pictures of my grandparents and people from the past in general, and have seen how different they looked. They had sharper jawlines and were lean, even though they weren't hitting the gym. Most people think genetics are set in stone, like a fixed blueprint. But the truth is, genes can be turned on or off, depending on nutrition and environmental factors. A field of science that proves your environment, including diet, can switch genes on or off, impacting everything from your growth to your facial structure, without changing your DNA sequence. Your grandparents' diet directly influenced which genes were turned on or off in your parents, which then shaped you. Think of your DNA like a piano. Your genes are the keys, but epigenetics decide which keys get played. If your grandparents lived through famine, war, or even just ate a heavily processed diet, their bodies adapted, and those adaptations could have been passed down to you. For example, during World War II, the Dutch famine caused starvation. Studies show babies born to mothers who were pregnant during this famine had higher risks of obesity, diabetes, and shorter lifespans, even if they themselves had normal access to food later. This means that if your grandparents ate nutrient-rich, whole foods, they likely passed down stronger, healthier genes to you. But if they ate nutrient-deficient, processed foods, you may have inherited weaker genes. So, yes, your grandparents' poor diet could have programmed your genes to store fat differently, digest foods poorly, or even age faster. Have you ever noticed how people from a century ago had strong jawlines, high cheekbones, and straight teeth? Or you can just look up ancient skulls on the internet. While today, many people have narrow faces, weak chins, and crowded teeth. This isn't just random. It's the result of dietary changes across generations. I had heard from some biological anthropologists that our faces have changed and that our mouths have gotten too small. And that was one of the reasons so many of us were breathing so poorly. And so I thought, well, this sounds interesting. These people are legit, I wanna check it out. And if you take an ancient skull, anything older than 500 years old, 5,000 years old, 50,000 years old, you're gonna see by and large about 99% chance these skulls are gonna have perfectly straight teeth. They never had their wisdom teeth removed. They never had braces any orthodonture, anything. They had straight teeth because they had these very wide and large mouths and these powerful jaws. If you start getting into the modern era of industrialized food, mouths start shrinking. So why do we have crooked teeth? Not from genetics, it's because our mouths have grown so small that the teeth have nowhere to go. So they grow Whoa. crooked. And what else happens when you have a mouth that's too small for its teeth? You have a smaller airway. So this is one of the reasons why so many people have snoring, sleep apnea, and other respiratory problems. This sounded so bizarre, because it's nothing I'd ever learned in school, but all anyone needs to do is look up some ancient skulls if you're online and check out their teeth and check out how they have these huge jaws, these big, flat, wide faces, powerful faces, and they all had this. And then you go into the wild, 5,400 different mammals, and check out and see how many have crooked teeth. The answer is zero. <laughs> so some, some bulldogs do because they've been bred to have right. this flat face just like humans. Yeah. But, but animals in the wild have straight teeth. And, and we did too. As a species, we, we have straight teeth. But, um, but because of industrialization, specifically because of food, our mouths have grown too small. You would never believe that. Like if someone told me that other than reading your book and, and kind of understanding where you're, where you're coming from, I would think this is nonsense, it's genetics. Ever wondered why braces are so common now? Our ancestors didn't need them. Their diets supported proper facial growth. In the past, people ate nutrient-dense whole foods, organ meats, raw dairy, bone broths, and naturally fermented foods. 
These foods were rich in vitamins A, D, K, 2, and minerals like calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus, which play a key role in bone and facial development. Our modern diets are weakening our facial structure as they are nutrient deficient. They are low in fat-soluble vitamins, lack collagen and bone nutrients, and too many processed foods in general. Dr. Weston A. Price, a dentist in the early 1900s, studied indigenous populations around the world. He found that native populations with traditional diets had straight teeth, broad jaws, and no cavities. In contrast, the groups that switched to Western diets developed narrower faces, crowded teeth, smaller jaws, and weaker bones within just one generation. Your height and bone structure aren't just about genetics. They're about nutrient availability during key growth periods. Every living thing needs the right nutrients to prosper and reach the full growth potential. The same goes for your height. If you don't give your body the right building blocks, it's gonna have to make adjustments depending on what it has. The nutrients that affect height and bone strength are calcium and magnesium, protein, vitamin A, D, and K, 2, and zinc. A 2019 study found that grandchildren of people who smoked had high asthma rates, even if their parents never smoked. Diet works the same way. If your grandparents grew up during nutrient-rich times, they likely passed down stronger bone density and better height potential to your parents, and eventually to you. But if they were malnourished, that could have limited your genetic potential before you were even born. It's over. We've seen how traditional diets build strong, resilient bodies. But over the last century, our food system has changed. The result? Each new generation is becoming weaker, more inflamed, and even more prone to diseases. If you're trying to argue this, just look at how braces are getting so common, how obesity levels are rising, testosterone levels dropping. The same disturbing conclusion. Americans are not winning their battle against obesity. It's so bad, some call it an epidemic. America's obesity has not doubled, it's tripled. That encourages body diversity, dispelling toxic masculinity and really redefining what it means to be a man. Men can cry, you so it's okay to be weak. If you're trying to debate that the main factor isn't diet. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. So, how can you reverse the damage and optimize your genetics? First, I want you to understand that you won't go from a normie to a giga chad. But you can change the course of your health and even improve facial structure by fixing your diet, especially those of you who are still young and developing. Eat more animal-based whole foods. The reason why I'll always be saying animal-based foods is because they provide all the nutrients you need. They contain easily digestible protein, with a complete essential amino acid profile, the fat-soluble vitamins, and healthy fats. It's impossible to get most of these essential nutrients from plant-based diets. So, if you're on a plant-based diet, by definition you'll be malnourished and may end up taking artificial supplements. At that point, why take artificial supplements that contain synthetic nutrients when you can eat actual foods that will give you real nutrients in the most bioavailable form? My advice on nutrition will be based on primal foods. So, if you're expecting something else, then this channel isn't for you. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man, Sh I'm saying. Prioritize grass-fed meat, organ meats, wild-caught fish, raw dairy, and eggs. Eat bone broth for collagen and jaw support. Fruits. Our ancestors ate fruits seasonally and in moderation. If you want to eat fruits, eat locally grown fruits and make sure they're free from pesticides. In the end, the foods we choose to eat are largely influenced by environmental factors such as our culture, socioeconomic status, and food accessibility. Eliminate processed foods and seed oils. Processed foods that's obvious. I don't know why you'd be eating them. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. Cut out refined sugars, flour, and vegetable oils. Replace the seed oils with healthy fats like butter and tallow. Chew tougher foods like steak and jerky to strengthen your jaw and try proper tongue posture for natural facial enhancement. The food that you eat today doesn't just impact you. It's shaping the health, appearance, and genetics of your children and grandchildren. Make informed choices about your health. Try improving what you can and make peace with what you can't.